Welcome to Ghostwatch 2016. We're watching Common Rider Ghost. My name is Coriander Dickinson. I've seen a bunch of Common Rider. My name's Heather Derry. I've seen the best episode of Common Rider today. My name is Kate Stark. I think Sentai is a food. That's that's Senbai. Oh, Senbei. You I don't, don't even know the same thing again. You don't even know. Did I we think do I know more time? about Sentai. You did than that you. last time. Well, I don't know that many foods that start with Sen. We watched episode 15. Anguish, the, the hard-headed, hard-headed escape, escape king. king. Stupid title. Spoilers, it's Houdini. Whoa, whoa, Whoa. those were actual spoilers. (laughs) We find out in like the first five minutes. Uh, you know what? What happened last time? Last week on episode 14, Ghost Pockets hacking the planet and Taco observes Florida from space. He did. All accurate. We have 86 days left. Unknown icons. Or as my computer insists on auto-correcting it to, I cups. I cu- <laughs> it's not wrong. It's wrong. It's pretty wrong. No, no, I it cups, seems accurate. Atari and ovary. Yep, all accurate. Those are my main characters. So we start with uh, an eye in the sky uh, shadow. It's more something. of a lightning storm. Storm. In the middle of the eye the shows up. Yeah, the sky. people are just walking around, and but they all notice, and they're like, "Oh, well, that's weird." Until the snack comes out, and the the snake comes by, out by snack and scares the crowd. Heather means rock snack. I wrote yeah. snack. It's a rock snack, though. Yeah, it's like Onyx, the rock snack. Yeah, like those rock candies. It's very good. Sure. And so we go to a wooded park next to a river. It looks to be some sort of party happening. Onari is wearing a party hat. There's noisemakers and like little banner and food and stuff. Yeah, it is to celebrate Cannon's recovery. Released from the hospital. She Ooh. free now. Yep. There's a little takoyaki stand uh, that is being run by an old lady. For those who don't know what takoyaki is. It's octopus balls. Not like testicles, but like balls of ground up octopus that's been like fried. No, it's not ground up. It's just cut. It's just cut. Just they cut it into a small little piece. cube, they, and then they bread it, and then they put them in these little like egg shaped grills, and then they cover it, and then they they turn it over. Deep, deep fried, not testicle octopus balls. Yeah. See, what you don't know is this is the entire time we've been calling him Taco Time, and that's confusing now because we've got takoyaki, octopus balls. Octopus time. He, his name is Octopus Time. I'm sorry, you had to find out this way. It's okay. I'll live. So Spectre and Cannon show up as well to party times. And uh, her name is Mrs. Fumi, the old yeah. lady? Yeah, Mrs. Fumi, the old lady. She's, she's she, selling the octopus balls. Yeah, she's yeah. so excited to see everybody. Well, especially Cannon and uh, Makoto. She's like, oh, it's like you two were spirited away. Yeah, you disappeared years ago. It's good to see you again. Flashback. Flashback to uh, Taco, Akari, Makoto, and Cannon sitting at her stand, eating octopus balls, looking adorbs as children. Like 10, maybe? Younger? Yeah, maybe like 9, because I think it was like 10 years ago. Yeah, exactly. And, and Taco's 18? Yes. That would make them 8. Yeah. Yeah. So they're But t- I think t- Makoto t- and Cannon are older. Gotcha. Uh, and then we also see a great shot of Yurosen holding up two sticks of takoyaki and being very excited about the food he cannot consume. But also upset about, quote, all this precious family time. Yeah, that was pretty funny. So I want to go eat takoyaki now and the podcast is canceled. Okay, sounds oh, good. Thanks is that all the sticks? for listening so much to Ghostwatch 2016. Uh, please follow us on Twitter. Tumblr and Instagram. Yeah, you'll find no, us at no. Go- Ghostwatch2016 Busy Eating Taco. Please follow Yaki. us on LinkedIn. 
Uh, no, no, we're never going there. Please join us on Ello and Peach. Can we just join Curious Cat? Should we? Shouldn't we? Everyone's doing it. That's what I hear. Go into a dad flashback of Taco and, and dad. Yep, dead dad is telling Taco to unite the 15 heroic spirits. And then they end in a merge hug. Taco is then just lo- like deeply looking into the Musashi icon. Wishing that he could talk to it. He's he's looming away from the party. And he looks over and he sees Makoto on some stairs further away from the party looking at a blue icon. Yeah, and uh, he sits next to him. He's like, oh, what 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 icon do you have there? And Spectre's like, oh, it's Houdini. Won't so, work for me, though. Spoilers, it's Houdini. Yeah, I told you first five minutes. But yeah, it won't work for me. I try it every time and it doesn't work. This is the icon we saw last episode, him trying to fumble with, but never getting any real context for. And then Taco's all like, well, you should just make friends with it. Yeah, that's what I do. Advice. Brilliant advice, Taco Time. That's totally what I do with all of my icons. I form a bond. It's a lie. It's just lucky. He is very lucky. We're in an alleyway now, and Pretty Boy, using an icon, summons Military Man, and they talk about icons. So I thought Military Man was dead. I'm I too. pretty sure he was dead. Or we saw him explode or something. Maybe he exploded back into an icon. Do things that explode not go away. Maybe ghosts can't die. Maybe they're just ghosts. Where do ghosts go when they die? Please write us. Well, no, like maybe it's like maybe it's like Steven Universe with the with the gems where if they they get poofed, they oh, they spoilers, in the gym. spoilers, rude. Is that really but spoilery? I, I, I assumed that at this point they would poof back into the icon, but we've seen a lot of the icons shatter. Yeah, that's true, and I'm I'm pretty sure we saw Military Man's icon chatter. Yeah, in the in the field with the cliffs. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I agree. I just it's been a while. I can't remember. Anyway, Pretty Boy's all like, "You follow my orders now," and Eminem's all like, "Well, I'm gonna go kill people, especially Boy and Spectre," and then Pretty Boy's all like, "No, no, 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 you follow my orders now." Don't just go off and do things on your own. Yeah, military boy's like, yeah, okay, sure, whatever. I guess I do that now. Then we cut to the lab. And Taco Time is staring at the Musashi icon. Yeah, and Onari is making faces at a yellow icon with rabbit hand ears. And Taco's upset because he can't quite talk to Musashi yet. And then Onari's all like, yeah, I can totally talk to Goemon. Goemon likes me. I'm Goemon's favorite. Yeah, and then as you, uh, as Taco is faced away from Musashi, you can see the Musashi icon move around a little bit like, oh, this is what's happening now. Okay. <laughs> like, he's paying attention. He's just not answering Taco right now. And Taco's all, I wonder what the icon place is like. And then from off screen, we hear, it's hell. Gramps and Urasen show up. Dressed stupid. <laughs> Gramps is wearing like a, a furry red bodysuit with like furry tiger shorts, like tiger print shorts. <laughs> so stupid. He's got a he's got a red wig on that's curly, and he's got two horns. And then Urison is wearing a blue wig with a horn and a tiger a fur tiger cape. <laughs> So this is what we refer to as Oni. They're generally... Does Oni mean stupid? Yeah. In this context, sure. They're generally translated to as demons or ogres for English audiences. And so we got the red and blue ogres here hanging out, having fun. They look real dumb. They friends. They best friends. This is the first time we've seen Eurosen, I think, take part in one of these stupid costume encounters. I've never seen Eurosen show up in, in anything other than, like, just him. I think we've seen him with, like, the bandit hood. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I think he once wore a cowboy hat. 
I have no memory of this. I remember him in a cowboy hat with tiny little guns, but maybe I'm making that No, up. actually, that sounds really familiar, I and I can totally picture it in my head. Yeah. I'm inclined to believe Kate on this one. I have a photographic memory, not a fact memory. That's true facts, though. Like, I, how, I, would you, how would you know if you can't remember facts? That that's true. God damn it, Heather. I'm sorry. Just asking. So Akari runs in with Onari and she holds up the spider lantern, revealing Gramps and Urasen. And Onari is freaking out. He yells, a steamed elder! Because he can see him for the first time. He's really excited about it. Taco's trying to get information out of Gramps. Gramps is all like, I'm not telling you squat about things I know. Except that, you know, I'm getting a vision of, let's say, an escape artist. Oh! Oh! And Tago's like, oh yeah! Houdini! Yeah, I've got that page bookmarked already because I already have seen that icon. Here's Houdini. And then, well, he's just like, I love Houdini! I love Houdini. And we get all kinds of facts about him. The facts being, he was a magician. In the 20th century, and he escaped from things. Yep. The end. And Akari's like, I like Houdini and everything that's paranormal. I'm going to prove, including you, Gramps. Gramps disappears. There's some smoke and then obvious confetti flying down, which I guess is, look, I escaped. Confetti. No more answers. Goodbye. And then two students run in, screaming about dragoons. And how there is a dragoon. That's a dragon, for those of you who don't know. I thought it was Durgan. Durgan, dragoon. There's several names they go by. Onari goes nuts. Just, he's like, oh, dragon, dragon, woo, ah, gotta find that. And I think he runs out of the room. I can't remember. Just on his own. He's very excited about dragoon. I think he keeps forgetting that he can't actually hurt Ganma. In any way. Or defend himself at all. It's nice that he wants to help, though. We cut back to the takoyaki stand. And Makoto and Cannon are both back there. And Cannon's like, yeah, you make the best takoyaki ever. Ms. Mrs. Fumi is so excited. And is like, I had so much fun. And you guys can come back whenever you want. And it was so nice to see you all. And she's real cute. And then Pretty Boy looms in the distance. And tells Spectre he wants to talk to him. Cannon actually approaches him and is smiley and is like, oh, hey, whatever, Prince Sama, Aaron, Aaron, pretty boy, I have, have no problem talking to you and we are friends probably. So we cut to the conversation location, which is under a train bridge somewhere else. That's that's their middle ground, right? Like, we got to have a bridge for Spectre. But Waterfront is not really Pretty Boy's thing. So just a gravel pathway under a bridge. Well, I mean, he likes to hang out in, like, gravelly places. Generally from rooftops, but... I I assume this is a middle ground meeting area where they can both feel comfortable. As Spectre and Pretty Boy are talking, Spectre is saying, I want to live as a human with my friends. Cannon and and Taco and and his friends, because I think he forgot their names but he was very excited about living as a human rather than a go ast and then pretty boy's all like I'm disappointed in you and then out of nowhere military man attacks so both military man and uh, Makoto transform they fight military man punches the dang ground and covers Spectre in rubble burying him completely Taco and Cannon then run up. Because Cannon has clearly gone to fetch Taco. Maybe Taco was just like, you know what? I'm hungry. Those Taco Yaki balls, they were great. I'm going to go back. Oh, hey, Cannon's here. Hey, Cannon, what's up? Where's uh, Where's your brother? Aren't you usually with him? Oh, he went off with... Oh, that's weird. I We should go check that. Unrelated, but yeah, let's go make sure they're fine. Sounds plausible. Taco then transforms into Newton. And blasts the dirt right off of Spectre. Easy as pie. Spectre continues to fight. He's super angry about being helped out. Well, I I can see that. He wanted to do it all on his own. So he keeps trying to do like this big 
highly telegraphed overhand punch at military man and then military man just comes in and punches him in like the gut or the chest and then detransforms him yeah like specter specter's always been very angry fighting not quite this angry fighting though but i th- i think the whole idea is that he's angry in a blind rage and so he can't focus well but he angry fighting always seemed to work better for him well maybe it was smug angry fighting mm that could make a difference. Taco detransforms from Newton back into his normal red jacket. He goes into boost. Yes. And then he fights a bit, but then he transforms again into Goemon. Yeah, military men's very like, keep showing me what you've got. I'm going to keep fighting you. Keep doing it. And I, at first I was just like, is he trying to get Taco to transform into every different thing he has to find out which icons he has what is with him well no i think he just wants a challenge like he he's talking about being entertained by the fights and he's clearly like goading people into stuff he's like the lives of individuals don't matter and then taco of course is all like the lives of individuals matter i think my favorite is when military man is basically reaper from overwatch and like turns into smoke and then teleports over to where Cannon is. Like five feet away. And then materializes again. And then takes Cannon and is like kidnapping her basically. Yeah. Pretty Boy calls calls him off the attack after uh, Ghost is going on. Spectre has a nap. Spectre faints and Taco like goes to grab him. And then they have a little minute but Spectre is clearly not super strong after all that fighting. Then they just start yelling for cannon. Each individually in their own way. We, we go to a park, Taco Time's yelling, he's calling for Urusen at one point, which Urusen does show up. However, it's, oh god, Urusen is in a teeny tiny hot tub with little cloth across his forehead. And when he looks at Taco Time, he's just like, why are you... He makes a very um, girl screech. Like like you're watching me in the bath, but yeah, I'm a lady. Yeah. And then just like disappears. We also see Akari looking. I'm assuming they called her. I suppose she was not with them when any of this happened. Yeah. And we go to, uh, we go to Spectre and he's wandering around, not yelling. And a creepy black icon floats up and then projects a map. And he's like, it's a message from Military Man. I didn't really understand what the message was. It was a map. And I think it's essentially, like, there was some writing in words we we couldn't see because it's like alien writing type thing. But it was essentially a map of, like, come here, sister here Mm. type, type deal. Like a treasure map. I mean, but they, for a human. They clearly weren't thinking this out. They should have sent the map to Akari. Maps are her thing. That's, That's true. true. Back to Spectre, and he's staring at Houdini. I think he's like, "All right, I need I need to make friends with this." But how? He starts like trying to talk to it and summon it and be like, "I need your help." And it, like, sparks at him in the kind of way that happens when you're crushing an icon. So he might be gripping it a little too hard. And then he yells at it again. He's like, you will help me. Give help. I'm like, dude, this is you're being a little rude. Yeah, and the icon thinks so, too. Because it just chains pop out of it, wrapping around Makoto with a lock. Yeah, with multiple locks. Like, obviously it's Houdini. It's supposed to be Houdini. But he gets chained up. And then the icon jumps onto his motorcycle. Yeah, his motorcycle rolls up. And then, okay, the best sequence of this entire show begins now. Wherein Spectre is getting trashed by his motorcycle. Which is operating and driving completely on its own. There's no human on the back of it. Just this little icon sitting there. Not touching controls, just sitting there. It The motorcycle is doing laps around Spectre. It's like gunning right for him. It it does like this sp- 
sparky spinny maneuver and like comes at him while spinning. Yeah, kind of like it's trying to kick him with the back tire. Yeah. Uh, we get Taco Time and Akari running up at, at one point and Taco Time's like, oh, I gotta help my friend. Look at, he's he's totally injured and you can tell because his leather jacket's super ripped up. And Makoto is like, nope. Nope, I do this on my own. I mean, he's he's got like bloody cuts on his face and stuff too. Like this was not an easy fight at all. No. But then Taco Time understands. He's like, yeah, no, you're right. I won't help you. And then Spectre summons the courage to jump over the bike instead of getting hit. It's a good first move. He made some progress. However, he was not straddling the bike, so he was kind of like side saddling it, which meant his feet were dragging on the ground, causing sparks. Well, we can go on that fast. There's always sparks. Off not here. with leather boots. I'm assuming somehow the chains have wrapped underneath. Maybe That's a little plausible. I ghost guess. sparks. Ghost sparks. He eventually gets on the bike, and what pulls the handbrake? Yeah, he's like fighting for control. And then everything seems chill. Yeah, everything seems good. It's like, oh, he won. That's nice. Well, it it is like a cut for a commercial break. And then it is a factory yard or like storage area for some pipes and gravel. And Eminem is there with Cannon and Spectre is coming up on his bike with his bike helmet on. I mean, you gotta gotta pause to get that helmet. It's not safe otherwise. Before going for the the location. A military man's like, oh, you're the only one who showed up? Well, fine. That, that fine. Although we do see Taco Time showing up as well, and he's like, holding his icon. Like, I'm gonna... But no, I said I wouldn't. It's the Musashi icon. Mm. So he's holding it with like his hand on the trigger. Like, he's gonna... But he's like, I promise. I Akari. promise, Spectre, I would not. Akari gives him kind of some sh- for not just jumping in and helping. Why aren't you helping? Why aren't you helping Makoto? Because Makoto getting punched again. I, I yeah, promised. I believe in him and the Musashi icon clothes. And Spectre's all like, I will suppress my limits. Uh, getting punched. And this pisses Javel off because he wants a good fight for fun times. He summons Rock Snack. And then he fuses with it. Yeah, that was bizarre. Yeah, I wasn't sure at first if he, like, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers got into it, or, like, with, like, a chair kind of thing, or if he just, like, possessed it or something. I was hoping he would be, like, riding around on top of it, but no, they fuse. And oh, then that it's was got, inside it's of got, it. like, crazy bling now. That would have been good. Oh, yeah. man, I would have loved to have seen him riding around on top of it. Yeah. But that's not what happened. He was inside of it, and Rocksneck had, like, a gold headdress and, like, chains all over it. But, like, not Houdini chains. Like, bling chains. Look, if I'm going to ride around in a rock snack, I'm going to bling it up. I'm not going to go for the standard model rock snack. Pimp your snack? Yes. Yeah. Pip it up. No, stop. (laughs) It sounded like that was a struggle for you to even say. It was. It was a bad idea that it came out of my mouth. So, snack starts. (laughs) Look at Hodor! (laughs) You, you tried, and you did well. No, you didn't. No, I didn't. You did one of those two things, you did. and okay. it was that you tried. I tried. I should not have. If you can see Hodo right now, <laughs> she's so embarrassed. It's okay. You can't be street uh, like us. I'm not doing that. I'm oh, you think I could say things? Say pimp, I could say pimp my snack. Oh my god, really? Both of you? <laughs> god, I'm hanging out with a bunch of dang nerds. Oh, wait, no, you're trying. You're Pimp. trying. Nope. <laughs> Pimp my snack. Am I the coolest one here? You say it. Pimp my snack. Damn it. <laughs> She's, she said it like know, four know, times I know, already. I know. I was hoping, I was hoping that our like, attention would... Pimp my snack. Yeah, no, she, she... Welcome to West Coast Customs, where we pimp your snack. Pimp your snack. Oh, my God. <laughs> You're so awkward. (laughs) (laughs) That feeling when you realize you're the coolest one in the room. It me. 
dang nerds, I swear. Um, so, where were we? Uh, we're at the part where the golden snack is shooting things. <laughs> <laughs> it's just flying around in the air, shooting. <laughs> And Makoto gets caught in a blast, and part of a building falls upon him. Right, right. He's and completely covered in rubble and rock and concrete. And then Tagu Time's like, yeah, no, transforming with my boost. And he just starts shooting the um, rock pimped snack, up snack. with his sunglasses slasher gun. All the other kids with those pimped out snacks. <laughs> <laughs> better, better run, run better, better run. run. <laughs> I got sunglasses slasher. <laughs> song is very different now. I don't know. It scans. Uh, Taco Time calls for Urusen to bring Captain Ghost. Generally, it doesn't happen that way. Generally, Urusen just shows up and like, Hey, idiot. Why are you not using Captain Ghost? This time, Urusen was not so helpful. He was all like, No. That's not how it works, boy. And then he got blasted by fire. Yeah, and Urusen got, like, sent into the sky. Spectre, meanwhile, is under this mountain of rock. And he's trapped. Taco is having trouble because the snack is shooting at him, and Onari and Akari are there, and they will get shot. Spectre pulls out the Houdini icon and looks longingly into it and presses the button and by God, it works. I assumed at this point he would just escape from the rubble and pop up somewhere else. No, no, no. What happened instead? Uh, the cement blocks that were on him exploded into dust. And then he's just standing there. The chains disappear. And then he transforms into to the Houdini jacket. Now let's talk about this for a quick second. A quick second. Just a hot minute. Oh, it's going to be a couple hot minutes. Okay. So, he drops the icon into his belt. Check. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. his, Standard. His motorcycle. Right. His motorcycle. Uh, why is that there? Well, well he wrote it in. He. It was just, but, it was there. But now it's coming in on its own. It is, and then it butterflies itself. It does a backflip. It jumps oh, into the air. I apologize. It did a backflip. Then it butterflied itself, turning itself into a quadcopter. With a jacket in the middle. It's got, like, chain wings, like a moth. And the trim of the jacket is also chains, but the wheels, because they have split, have now turned into quadcopter propellers. Yep. We're not with you here, folks. This, this is, is all true. This is my favorite jacket. Oh, yeah, me too. This the, nothing is better than this jacket right now. I like that it, it does like the pose in the air next to the Houdini illustration, and they look nothing. Oh God! Like there's the, no connection whatsoever. The illustration of Houdini is him wearing like you know a nice blazer kind of thing with a top hat and like magic tricks coming out of it. Well, yeah, Houdini is from the 20th century, like like years and years ago. Only I years think, and years though. I don't think quadcopters were. We're around for him. I don't think so. Not so much. I mean, I think he'd like to have used them. I think he would have been into it. The jacket attacks Rocksnack, which is in the sky. The tagline for this jacket is, any trick you envision, the master magician, which I think is great. So yeah, it comes and it like engulfs Makoto. And I expected, you know, the quadcopter part to not be... A giant like backpack attachment. No, no, no. It was no. still there. No, no, it's still there. Oh yeah. Um, also on his mask, we see like uh, two chains intersecting with like diagonally. a lock in the middle. Just, I mean, out of all the other details of the costume, that's not that important. Uh, what is important is that, of course, because this jacket is technically a quadcopter, Spectre flies to hit Rock Snake and attack him. Uh, he goes and rescues uh, Cannon, who is on top of a tower nearby, and just flies her down, all casual-like, like, every day you get a quadcopter backpack. 
oh yeah like there was no training on this it was just like i'm gonna go over here now i mean great i suppose it does look like a motorcycle split in half a butterfly motorcycle but i just there was a there was a phrase about now kate that you really enjoyed oh yeah yeah do you remember ocular horror (laughs) oh yeah oh yeah it's one of my new favorite insults uh onari was talking about oh i don't know i think he was getting hit in the eye with spider lantern and he just no like this is the part where onari and akari are like why can the houdini jacket fly and urasen pops up and is like i don't know and then onari turns to him and is like ocular horror what is this I just, I think calling anything ocular horror is so good. And then Onari faints. And then Yurison's like, after all of this time, why now? Like, well, you're going to do this gag, like, years after we've met. Ocular horror, time to faint. Now, Spectre in this jacket is grabbed by tail hand of rock snack. Reminder, the flying rock snakes have hands on their tails yeah if you are just tuning in now yeah i I forgot (laughs) i forgot until it was happening so he's grabbed because he's houdini he burst into confetti well it knocked the quadcopter off his back so is him quadcopterless so it's a detachable piece which i guess is which is important now because he reappears riding on top of it like surfboard all of my notes for this entire section of the show were in all caps and a lot of confusion. Oh yeah, he's riding it like a surfboard. Yeah. I I think we said hoverboard when we were watching it. God, it was so stupid. I forgot about that and whole then thing. He like pulls on the ripcord of his belt, uh, belt yeah. and chains race down and encircle the snake and catch it. Now rem- reminder, they're in the sky above the clouds. And Spectre, like, falls through the hoverboard somehow and does a Houdini Omega Drive. The great name, people. Which is a a spin kick. Imagine he is a drill. Yeah. And kicking at the same time. Yeah, and he hits the snake and phases into the snake. And we're in, like, a magical space inside where Eminem is. And he just spin kicks Eminem for a long time. Yes, long enough that Eminem has a couple of lines where he, I think he's he's excited and happy about how this fight is going. Yeah, he gets a challenge. Then there are explosions. And we hit a camera angle from, what, the ground up where Spectre just slides in. It's very cool hero angle because he won yeah everything seems fine all of a sudden yep he has a, a, a smiley happy handshake with taco time akari off to the side with canon just says boys are dumb yeah and then in the background behind taco time and uh specter we see pretty boy on top of like a crane or something yeah, it's a crane looking down being like mm, not my friends anymore and like kind of leaves yeah, but it's like it's one of those cranes that's on uh, a pair of railroad tracks for moving like these giant pipes. So he has to walk, let's say, a block across this crane and then maybe down a ladder to get down, which it doesn't show us, but I just assume happens. I, I assume he, he walks out of shot and teleports. Hmm. I'm not sure he would use a ladder. I, w- I want to imagine him awkwardly using a ladder. With his, like, feathers and his scarves and flowy pants getting yeah. caught. And then he's, like, stepping on them as he's yep. going down, just silently cursing to himself. Shouldn't have worn my billowy pants today. If you have any drawing skills, maybe you could make this vision happen for Corey. Send all entries to linkedin.com slash ghostwatch2016. Uh, don't send them there. Sorry, net slash on Twitter, at Ghostwatch2016. We do actually have a Twitter account. That's the only that, legitimate that link I've given this entire show. Peach? No. No. No one uses Peach. Skype us. I... Ghostwatch doesn't have a Skype account. Hit us up on ICQ. 
Ghostwatch doesn't have an ICQ number. MSN. Nope. MSN Messenger died. Call 1-800-GHOSTWATCH-2016. I think that's too long for a phone number. Just yell it. Yell it really loud. We maybe we might hear it. Um, Taco Time tries to talk to Musashi at this point. He pulls out the icon, and then he gets sucked into it. And then he was in a space talking to Musashi, but the lighting was all red, and previously only the red lighting stuff has been Ganma Hill. Well, because I think the idea is that the He's because the, the icons. Icon red so that's why they want the red lighting coloring. and it's that's also why they do the fisheye lens mm-hmm. yeah because mm-hmm. when you're inside a space that is like an eyeball suddenly everything is round yep you're in a tiny round ball I mean, so it, everything temple is round. thing kind of made sense because they're like tatami mats and very like temple like and misashi is all like you had faith in a friend so now we're friends yeah, there was some good life advice there i feel like they had a good heart to heart he he also said your soul must never yield. So I kind of feel like if we ever hit an episode where, for whatever reason, Taco Time decides to be kind of like quitter talk or anything, Musashi is not going to be happy with him. No. Yeah, he says the other icons might not bond as easily, but yeah, never give up, never surrender. Burn bright. I mean, he didn't say that, but I'm sure Taco took it that way. And then Taco pops back out of the icon, and Anari and Akari are like, what the hell just happened? Anari is very excited, because he's like, oh, wow, you got to talk to him. It's great. And Taco's all like, I thought you could talk to the Goemon icon. To which he responds by putting his hands up beside his head, and he's just like, bunny ears. No. But I was goofy, and that was fun. Yeah, Onari is a weird dude. We get a quick shot of... Gramps, looking into the distance by the monolith, being all like, oh, your son has taken another step forward. Which I think is good. It sounds like Taco's making progress. I'm happy about that. And we cut to Ganma Hell. Somebody's holding up an icon. It says Necrom. 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 And that's the end. I don't think Necrom's a real person. I think Necrom's a real person. I am undecided on Necrom. It sounds like it could be a food. Can I have a plate of Necrom with rice on the side? Mm. So like a savory food? I mean, you could add... Yeah. I was thinking it would be something breaded. I as- I associate things like Necro with dead stuff. Yeah. So I assume it would be rotting, whatever it is. No, no. I mean... No, no. I think... I think dead animal the, is something the, I would eat. The foods... There's a variety of them. Uh, they're all called croms. The net at the beginning is to identify what kind of crom. So necrom is different from like raw crom. Raw crom, which is like a ramen derivative. I was thinking raw and dead, but sure. <laughs> Noodles. Noodles much more appetizing, Kate. I don't know. Noodles I called think... crom. Yeah. Crom noodles. Crom noodles. Have you never had crom noodles? They are great. You guys don't know Conan the Barbarian, right? No. Nope. <laughs> okay. Do you guys want to go get some crom noodles? Yeah. Great. Yes. Bye, crom. Um, thank you all for listening. This has been fun. Sound more convinced, why don't you? Kate, can you give us some real links, places people can go? Absolutely. You can find us on uh, YouTube at Ghostwatch2016. You can find us on Twitter at Ghostwatch2016. You can find us on iTunes Ghostwatch 2016. And you can find us at ghostwatch2016.xyz. Cool. Thanks so everyone. much. Thanks so much for listening, everybody. And we'll probably be seeing you next week. Bye. Ooh. See you later. Goodbye. Goodbye. Bye. Goodbye. Goodbye. So professional at this. Farewell. Pimp your goodbye. Uh, feeder saying. <laughs> Good. Did you just pimp your goodbye? I now suggested she's, em- she's embarrassed, <laughs> so yes, she did. I'm out. I'm out. <laughs> I'm dropping this mic, except Please not because it's expensive. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Fake mic drop. Mm-hmm.